Hi, I'm John Ellis, and today I want to talk to you about the emotion anger. Anger is rocket fuel. You know, it fuels behaviors like hatred, jealousy, feuding, hate, temper, rage, spite, retaliation, malice, all of those things. And none of these behaviors are enduring to other people. So angry people eventually end up all alone. You can't hug a chainsaw. And the question is, why would anyone choose anger as a dominant emotion? It makes no sense. And the answer is simple, control. Angry people find either safety or pleasure in control. So let's look at the safety group first, because that's the nicer of the two groups. Many children are abused physically, sexually, verbally, when they're very young. And they can't fight back. So some take on toxic shame for what was done to them. Oh, it must be my fault. And they get angry at themselves or they turn to fear and sadness for self-protection. Abused children are often told that they deserve what they're getting. Look what you made me do. Sometimes it takes threats. If you tell anyone, this family's going to fall apart. Sometimes the abused child doesn't listen and they go and tell their fear-based mom. Uh, who often refuses to believe them, thinking that if dad gets convicted, he's going to go to jail and they're going to lose the family income. So some of these children seek safety in anger. And when they act out this rage that's inside them at school, like they're angry all the time at school for no reason, they're sent off for medication. Sometimes when they come home and they act out their anger, they're beaten by dads. I'll beat this out of you. Moms might say with humiliation and try to control them, say, why can't you be like your obedient brother? What's wrong with you? Why are you mad all the time? Fathers, they're supposed to be provider and protectors. But angry dads are not great at providing within uh, safety within the family. You mess with their kids outside the family, they'll beat your head in. But inside the family, they turn their anger on mom and the kids. So then protection defaults to mom. And mom, if she's an anger-based mom, she'll fight with dad. But the problem is that most angry men marry fear-based women that they can control. So what does the fear-based mom say? Ah, Just do what you're told. Follow the rules. Don't start stuff. Just avoid him. Stay away from him. Or they get the question, well, what did you do to make him mad? You must have done something. When mom doesn't pick up the mantle of protection, it defaults to the oldest child. And if that child abdicates, just keeps going down the line until it hits one. One family, there were six kids. Nobody picked up the mantle of protection. They all lived in self-protection. But usually the oldest child picks up the defender role and becomes the defender of self, mom, and other kids. Sometimes it's just the kids and not mom, and that doesn't please mom at all. So this oldest child, they might take the beating for to save the younger ones. One boy at school said, I said, why do you take blame for everything? Why do you get beaten? Well, I'm, I'm good at it. He didn't know that he was protecting his mom and his sisters. One woman, she let this man sexually abuse her. And she took it to protect the uh, younger children, the younger girls in the family. But anger, when you're continually abused, starts to build up. And often that angry defending child waits for the day of reckoning. And that day is when that child is big enough, strong enough, angry enough to grab that angered parent, whether it be a mom or a dad, and pin that, usually a man, pin them to the wall. See, if you ever touch me or my my siblings or my mom again, I will put you right through this wall. Some boys, they just hit their dad with a fist so hard, they just knock him to the ground and threaten him. That's the day of reckoning. Other children pick up anger by modeling. It's for pleasure. You know, one man looked up to his rebellious, angry brother and thought it was cool, so he modeled him. Some uh, angry boys model their angry dads for power and pleasure. They fight like dad, they drink like dad, and they bully just like dad. They become the toughest kid in the school because that's what my angry dad wanted. That's what he was. 
And they fill with hatred and jealousy and feuding and hate and temper, rage, malice, abuse, fighting back all the time. They're quick-tempered and so what? Everybody avoids them. Everybody walks on eggshells around them. Sometimes they look good to women because they, they are false protectors. But when they get married, they turn that anger on that mom, that girl. These men or women, there's lots of angry women too, they thrive on control. And they seldom say the words, I'm sorry, because I'm only giving you what you deserve. The odd time they'll say, sorry, 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 when they're going to lose their spouse. Uh, many of them turn to drugs, sex, rock and roll, and that leads them into a life of sin and self-destruction. And once addiction takes over, you get a whole raft of other demons just flood into you over time, sometimes re reasonably quickly. And later in life, the body pays the price, and often it's the heart that goes first. Anger came into the world with Cain in the early Genesis chapter. Cain gave a sacrifice to God that wasn't what God demanded. His brother was obedient, gave him the right sacrifice. God was pleased with him. So God says to Cain, why are you so angry? Why is your face so downcast? Anger and uh, sadness came into the world with Cain. If you do the right thing, God said, will you not be accepted? I don't play favorites. But if you don't do the right thing, sin is crouching at your door and it desires to have you, but you must rule over it. So what's Cain do? He goes out and murders his brother and destroys his life with sin. And that's the destiny of most angry people. They end up destroying their lives with sin. The Apostle Paul was an angry man who chased Christians to beat them and put them into jail. But when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, his life changed. He chose obedience. Who are you, Lord? What do you want me to do? And he became the greatest apostle of all. Paul's new behaviors were driven by love. And that was the love that was given to him by Jesus while he's sitting there on the road blind. Paul didn't get what he deserved. He got grace and forgiveness, and he never forgot it. His heart was radically changed after he was saved and baptized. He was, his heart of stone was replaced with a heart of flesh, and his angry heart was replaced with a courageous, compassionate, loving heart that was obedient to God. He was positioned for success, and his old ambitious ways were used by God for good. Paul put to death his old sinful ways at his baptism. Death to the old self and rising up in the new self. And later he wrote to the Ephesians about anger. He said, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. What does all mean in the Greek? It means all. What's it mean in Hebrew? All. What's it mean in English? All. Get rid of all anger. And Paul knew that every human would be tempted by anger. You would feel it, but don't act on it. In Ephesians 4 verse 26 says, in your anger, do not sin. Don't be like Cain. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. When you get angry and mess up, go fix up by fessing up and fixing up with whoever you hurt. God replaced Paul's anger with zeal. Jesus was zealous when he was in the temple. He was not angry. Only God the Father has the right to righteous anger. If you have righteous anger, you are playing God and you're underqualified. Stop it. But most Christians that are anger-based will say Jesus got angry in the temple. But John 2 verse 17 tells the truth. His disciples remembered while he was in the temple clearing it. Zeal for your house will consume me. Anger says what can't be done. You got to do it my way. Zeal says what could be done. God's way. My house can be a house of prayer for all nations. Look what could happen. Get this junk out of here. Zeal gives us God's best. So if you're an angry chainsaw, God loves you. And he wants to transform you into a zealous child of God. He wants to give you the grace to mend the fences with your families and friends. 
before it's too late. But you have to want to be set free of the demon of anger that is destroying your life. And the process is really simple. Get saved. Accept, accept Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. Get baptized. Death to the old self. Life to the new self. And go into the waters of baptism confessing your sins and renouncing the work of the devil. Then repent. Change a heart. Change a mind to God's ways. Obedience to his will and his ways. I love watching angry people get set free. They are so much fun. They're so open and honest. And if you're an angry Christian who wants to get set free, pray about what you should do. God does not want you to waste your time, your whole life in anger. He wants you to get free, but you must want to come into agreement with him. He will tell you what to do, how to get out of that storm. You may even hear the storm on my window right now as the rain is coming down. Get rid of your anger. God bless you.